Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Friday, April 9th, 2021. We're brought to you, as always, by our good friends at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, I believe, is the best dentist in the world. If you've got a chance to hire the world's best at anything, wouldn't you? Shouldn't you? Yes. 317-849-2933 is the number to call to hire the best dentist in the world. Make the call. I want to remind you, if you're watching on YouTube, like this, subscribe to this feed, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I appreciate it. Also want to remind you, never be too proud to drink your can out of a wine. The Sterlings, proponents of drinking wine out of a can, at least one of the Sterlings is. Uh, let's talk about basketball, and then we'll talk about the Indianapolis Colts and something that I think it's a long shot for draft night, but I think it's really interesting, so we're going to talk about it. But first, Indiana basketball. No news today, which is really unusual. We found out at about 7.30 last night that Armand Franklin is not coming back to Indiana, that he's going to go to Virginia. So we talked about that this morning. But now an entire news cycle has passed without Indiana doing anything. So let's take this time to take a deep breath and recap. <sighs> Good deep breath. All right. Not even two weeks ago. It's been 11 days uh, 12 days, I guess, because it was Sunday the 28th that Indiana announced that Mike Woodson was going to be the new head coach of the Hoosiers. Not even two weeks ago, Mike Woodson came to Bloomington to be the head coach. How do we feel about that now? He's 63 years old. We know who is in the portal, who's staying, who's going. We feel pretty good about Mike Woodson right now, in part because of the staff that Indiana has surrounded him with. Number one, Thad Mata. As the Associate Athletic Director for Men's Basketball, Thad Mata, a terrific college basketball coach at Butler, at Xavier, and at Ohio State, where he was a nemesis for Indiana University and Tom Crean during Tom Crean's almost his entire run at Indiana University. There was Thad Mata beating them in the Big Ten tournament, beating them in the Big Ten, winning conference championships, winning the conference tournament, going to the Final Four, all that stuff happened for Ohio State because Thad Mata was there. Now he's part of the Indiana program, which is terrific. And then this past week, we learned that Dane Fife, formerly the associate head coach at Michigan State, is coming to Bloomington to be the assistant coach for Mike Woodson. And that is a really, really good thing because not only is Dane Fife an alum of Indiana basketball and the last team that Bob Knight coached at Indiana, he's also a terrific dude relates to kids exceptionally well. He recruits at a high level. He works extremely hard. He is tenacious, and he's a hell of a competitor. I feel great that Dane Fife is a part of this program, and I think you should too. So those are important things in terms of the staff. We keep hearing that Larry Brown is going to be uh, hired as kind of an advisor, sort of a senior advisor for men's basketball in the same way that Gene Cady served for Steve uh, Lavin at St. John's. So, Larry Brown, one of the great coaches in the history of basketball, really, really smart dude. If he's a part of your brain trust, you got a hell of a brain trust. So that is the staff as we know it right now. Kenya Hunter also sticking around with Indiana. Let's talk about the players. Two have decided to leave. Al Durham, goners. Armand Franklin, goners. Al Durham has gone to Providence. Armand Franklin, like I said, has gone to Virginia to study and play basketball there. And following the footsteps, perhaps, of Malcolm Brogdon, both as a player and as a man, you could do a hell of a lot worse for a role model than Malcolm Brogdon. Okay, who's staying? Parker Stewart is staying. We don't know Parker Stewart. Parker Stewart, I was surprised to learn, is 6'5". I thought he was about 6'2". Did you know that Armand Franklin is listed at 6'4"? So uh, Parker Stewart, an inch taller and much more dynamic on the offensive end. What kind of defensive player is he going to be? Is he going to be Armand Franklin's equal from a defensive perspective? We're going to have to find out. But Parker Stewart can flat fill the bucket. He's a 35% three-point shooter and a guy who can score in a variety of ways and did that for Tennessee Martin, averaging 19 points a game this past season. Christian Lander is going to stay. He was a freshman in what should have been his high school senior year. Now, in what should be, and it's going to be his sophomore year, but should be his freshman year 
I think he's in a much better position to compete in the Big Ten, both offensively and especially on the defensive end. That's what kept him off the floor for large expanses of time. He had trouble defending, and can you blame him? He was a high school senior in reality. Uh, Jordan Geronimo is coming back. He's 6'6". He hit 40% from beyond the arc, but before we get all, uh, you know, agitated and excited about Jordan Geronimo and his three-point shot, we got to remember that he only took 10. He hit four, but he took 10. He's going to take more of this coming year. If he can hit 40% from beyond the arc, you know what? Indiana's going to have a hell of a team, and Hunter is going to have a hell of a time trying to stay on the floor unless he figures out how to play good fundamental defense and make the right decision with the basketball. I think Mike Woodson holding Hunter accountable toward that end is going to be huge in the development of Jerome Hunter. So Hunter, he he was never in the portal. He was never thinking about leaving. So uh, there's nothing to report about him. But it's interesting because Jordan Geronimo and uh, Hunter are kind of similar type guys, at least in terms of height and in terms of athleticism. Uh, Race Thompson, he's staying. Race Thompson is a guy, if uh, Mike Woodson is true to his word and goes four out and one inside, it was surprising to me that Race Thompson stayed unless what Mike Woodson is thinking about doing is rotating Trace Jackson Davis to the outside, having him be a three-point threat, and having Race Thompson and Joey Brunk both on the inside offensively. That would be interesting to me. Race Thompson played really hard this past year, possession after possession after possession. Never saw him take time off as a basketball player playing for Archie Miller. And there were not many guys on the Indiana roster that you could say that about. Xavier Johnson is coming to Indiana. So let's go back for a second. In the portal, six said that they might not come back. Two decided not to come back in Durham and Franklin. And then the other four have decided to come back. Indiana picks one up. Xavier Johnson from Pittsburgh. Xavier Johnson, a ball-dominant point guard type guy, 6'3", 200 pounds, strong. Finishes at the rim with strength and balance. He can put the ball in the bucket. He can also dish 5.7 assists per game last year for the Panthers before he left the program with a couple of games left in the regular season. Can't do that. But he's coming to Indiana. Fresh start. We're going to let that be a fresh start. He was recruited initially out of high school by Kenya Hunter. He signed uh, or committed to Nebraska when Kenya Hunter was there. Then Kenya Hunter was hired by UConn. He rescinded his commitment and went to Pitt for three years. Again, before leaving a little bit early. And now he's with Indiana. And he said last night on the phone, he said, I've told the guys, get ready to work. Okay. You know what? you never been to Bloomington before. I don't know that the guys who've been there a long time need to hear from this guy, get ready to work. I, I don't know whether that that kind of communication is necessary, but I guess it's better than, uh, than Johnson saying, you know what, boys, I'm going to show up. We're going to kick back and lounge around and party our asses off. I guess he'd rather have a guy say, we're going to go to work. So there you go. That's what's happened with Indiana that we know of to this point. Keon Brooks, he is not in the portal at this point for the University of Kentucky. So to speculate upon whether he's going to go to Indiana or not is premature. We can talk about it. We can talk about rumors about him transferring from Kentucky to Indiana. But until he enters the portal, it's not going to happen. So there we are. Let's take another deep breath. (sighs) Nice. Uh, The Masters continues. And Jordan Spieth, nice, tidy little 68 today, coming off that 71 yesterday. So he's at 5 under par. He's two strokes behind Justin Rose, who had a tough time early in today's round, just like he did yesterday, finished strong, got back to even on the day. So 65-72 for Justin Rose. want to remind you that the Pacers play tonight at Orlando. Orlando is really not very good after the trade that they made with the Chicago Bulls. And so you have got to hope that no matter who's healthy for tonight, whether Brogdon, Sabonis, or Turner play, all of them, none of them, the Pacers, they still really need to win this game. they got to put together some wins. The Raptors, 
They lost last night, so Indiana gained despite the fact that they didn't play. They solidified, I should say, their ninth spot in the playoff uh, race, and they're taking 10 this year out of the East and out of the West. You fall to 11th, you're out of the playoffs. Right now, the Raptors are in 11th place. The NFL draft is 20 days away, and I think it's going to be really interesting to watch what the Indianapolis Colts do. They've got the 21st overall pick. They may, they may trade down. I think it depends on who's available at 21. If somebody falls, if they're in love with Christian Derrissaw as a left tackle candidate, you know what? Maybe they exercise that 21st pick and they take him. But if Derrissaw goes, or uh, how about Jalen Phillips? Jalen Phillips is taken. He's a dynamic kid, right? And so out of Miami. But he was told by the medical personnel at UCLA, you should retire from football. You've had enough uh, uh, concussions. You should retire, quit the game. He didn't do that. He transferred to Miami, and now he's going to be a first-round draft pick. But he may go before the Colts select at 21st. So here's kind of a a weird thing that the Colts may choose to do. It's a long shot, but it's a possibility. Chris Ballard, as he looks at that left tackle position, we know what he did, right, in in the offseason during free agency. He signed Sam Tevy. Sam Tevy was a starting left tackle for the Los Angeles Chargers. He wasn't great at it, but he was passable. He was all right. So Ballard signs him as kind of an insurance policy. So let's say we get to 21 and Derrissaw is gone and Penny Sewell is gone. And so you, you just don't have those guys that you feel good about taking it 21. You might trade back. Maybe you trade back and you pick up an edge rush guy. And then later in the draft, you look at a kid like Spencer Brown out of Northern Iowa. Spencer Brown is really, really interesting. He's projected as a third or fourth round kid. Could be a left tackle, could be a right tackle. He's 6'8", 311 pounds. He gained 90 pounds working in the weight room. He's tenacious, a, a workout warrior type guy. And so he has bubbled into the radar. He, By some people, he is said to be about the 100th best guy in a draft. All right, but this is a guy who hadn't played a whole lot of left tackle or hadn't played a whole lot of tackle. He played on the defensive side of the ball. When he was in high school, he played tight end. When he was in high school, he is an elite level athlete with great size. And his senior year in high school, he averaged better than 20 points a game scoring and 18 rebounds a game playing for his high school basketball team. So this is one of those guys. And if you can hang some more meat on him and he figures out fundamentally how to use his body, how to use his hands, how to punch, all of that stuff. If he can figure out the technique, he has every bit of the physicality necessary in order to play left tackle in the National Football League, just not right now. So maybe with Tevy as a stopgap, you select Brown in the third or fourth round. I th- and if they trade back from 21, they're going to pick up a third rounder. You select Brown, and you teach him how to play the game. You trust your coaching staff, Kevin Mawai. Among those guys, you trust those guys to teach him the game of football and coach him up to a level where he can start at left tackle. It's kind of an interesting idea. And this, I didn't come up with this on my own, that this guy could wind up playing in the National Football League for a long time. It came from a a former coach in the NFL who, who shares information with me from time to time. He said, take a look at this guy. So I looked at that guy. And you know what? He looks like he's got the kind of potential that you need to play at a really, really high level. So we'll see exactly what the Colts do. I don't think they're going to do that, but keep an eye on Spencer Brown throughout the draft as a guy some smart general manager is going to tab, not to be an immediate fix at left tackle, but down the road, a guy who can flat play if he's instructed correctly. There you go. Cubs, they won last night. Three long balls. Drives me nuts. They cannot scratch out runs. They can't string together three hits. Some games, they don't get three hits altogether. The Cubs offensively are inert. At some point, you got to figure out that it's time to put the bat on the ball, not try to hit it 480 feet, but get on base. Could you please do that for me, Cubs? All right, the Masters continues. 
Can't wait to talk to you Monday morning. Breakfast with Kent brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Remember to subscribe. We appreciate it. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend.